and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock and we're here live at day two of Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. We have a very esteemed guest with us right now, Mr. Jason Altmeyer. Jason, welcome to the interview. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you on. Jason is Guidewell's Senior Vice President of Public Policy and Community Engagement. So Jason, there's been many conversations. We've had a lot of guests reference that innovation is wonderful and possible, but that it makes the most sense to have policy involved with it. We really have to make sure that they match up. How is it that government and other health services can really encourage the effective uptake of digital transformation in the health industry? What's amazing about this conference is you have a lot of really smart people working on big ideas, things that are going to transform not just medicine, not just the way we deliver and practice healthcare, but the whole world. It's going to affect everybody. And the recurring theme that you hear from all of them is frustration with the government, frustration with regulation and, and, and burdensome FDA approval processes. And that's all legitimate. Those are legitimate concerns, but they also have to understand there's a reason why some of those regulations exist. There's a balance that exists between patient safety and these new wonderful ideas that have the, the potential to benefit everybody. So when you start talking about things like genetic engineering and you start talking about uh, you know, additive manufacturing, this 3D printing and the impact that's going to have when you have DNA involved and, and, and data, the, the patient's medical record and, and how that data is going to be available to researchers and physicians and others. And all of the issues they're talking about today, there's a legitimate point of view that the government is slowing that down. And we need to do what we can to get out of the way and let that research continue, but we don't want to do it in a way that's going to detrimentally impact patient safety at some point down the road. Absolutely. So, you know, another conversation that, that's often had is, you know, we want to make sure that we're learning from people who have already blazed a trail. And I think that in your role, you work a lot with public and population health advocates. What is it that we can learn from these folks, public and population health advocates, as, especially as the industry moves more to a value-based care system? Well, population health is all about the reimbursement for physicians and hospitals. We're moving away from that fee-for-service system into more of a pay-for-performance, a value-based reimbursement system. And, and that's just the first step. But where this is going in the context of what we're learning today is talking about things that are going to impact the patient in ways that people can't even understand at this point. To, to have a device, whether it be maybe in your contact, in your eyes, or, or something that's floating in your bloodstream, as they're talking about today, that's going to alert your physician as soon as you get sick, before you even realize or have any symptoms, um, and what the physician's going to be able to do to respond to that. I think people are comfortable with that. But where you go with keeping that data and making sure that you have privacy protections in place, that's going to be the balancing act that we're going to have to toe when we start talking about public policy. Right. Well, Jason, you know, we know that we, you spent a number of years in Capitol Hill. You were a, a U.S. representative. You know, you, I think, probably have a very unique perspective on what health policy decisions must be made now to ensure that health healthcare market 2.0 really does advance. I think the key issue is for policymakers, both at the federal and even the state level, to be ahead of the curve. And especially at the federal level, they have a tendency to be reactive, to legislate based upon things that have already happened, not based upon where we're going as a country. And when you think about these innovations and technologies that we're talking about today, I think it's really important for federal policymakers, the FDA and other regulatory agencies, to be ahead of that decision-making process rather than just reactive based upon yesterday's news to get ahead of the curve and make sure that we're legislating and regulating in a way that's going to impact where that innovation is going. You know, well, I think that's why it's so important that people like yourself and hopefully many other policymakers folks who are involved with making those decisions come to events like Exponential Medicine because they're here to see it firsthand and really understand what the future of healthcare might look like. So Jason, thank you so much for your thank time you. here, for joining us here at the Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock. We look forward to seeing you again soon.